The first tool we're going to look at is the Android Debug Bridge, or just better known as ADB. And it is far and away the most important development tool we have. What's interesting is that we don't necessarily interact with it a lot, but it's very important because it makes interaction between our desktop and our device possible. Right, so when we're sitting here and we're working on our desktop, we've got that device over there all hooked up by basically a USB connection. Right, again, if it's a virtual device, a simulation of that, we need to have that ability to communicate. Right, so as we mentioned, ADB provides a daemon or a server process on the device called a daemon. And of course, we have our server process on our desktop, and ADB is providing that connection between there. So if ADB isn't working, nothing works. We'll have, we're not really able to do any significant development without ADB in place. Now, as I mentioned, ADB provides this command line interface that hooks into the system. Now, in order to get to the command line interface, it's called ADB, and what you need to do is go out to wherever you installed your Android development environment. There'll be a subfolder in there called SDK, and inside there there's a folder called Platform Tools. There's where you'll find utility ADB. So you either need to be reference that path fully when you type your commands or put it into your path environment variable. Now the thing that's kind of interesting about the ADB command line utility is it, it serves kind of a, a wide range of features. And it's kind of everything just related to ADB. Some of the features of the ADB command line utility exist to actually manage the ADB server and connections and devices and emulators. So it's just kind of managing the ADB connections themselves. Other ADB features exist to actually send commands and operations out to the devices and virtual devices. So it's important to recognize that it's just covering this kind of whole broad set of capabilities. Now if we first look at the commands that are related to controlling the processes and devices, the command you're most likely to use and you'll most often use when using the ADB command line utility is the devices command. And what that does is that indicates what devices or virtual devices are currently connected up to your desktop. And so basically if you open up a Windows command line, if you type ADB devices, what that will then do is come back and give you a list of all the currently running emulators and connected devices on your machine. If we look at the results from the ADB devices, this first one here where you see that list of alphanumeric characters, that shows us it's a real device, it's a physical device. And those characters are the ADB signed serial number. Now for an emulator, the serial number always starts out with emulator hyphen. And you'll see that sequence of digits there. So that shows it's an emulator. And those digits there will correspond to the digits that appear in the top left hand corner of the emulator window itself. And so just so for your information, those digits you see, in this case the 5554, that's the TCP socket number that ADB is communicating to that emulator with. Key thing to know is that the number inside the serial number from ADB will always match the number that shows up in the emulator window. Now, as I mentioned, part of what ADB has to do is control this server lifetime. If you run an ADB devices and you don't see the devices you expect to see there, or you're having any kind of unusual things going on, you can always do ADB kill server. Right? So again, you just go out to your Windows command line and just say ADB kill server. And the indication that kill server worked is you get nothing back. It just doesn't return any results. But you'll find you'll do that sometimes, again, if you don't see your devices that you know are connected up or any kind of craziness goes on, because that signals that server process to reset. Now you can tell the server process to restart by just saying start server. Uh, but in general, you don't have to do that. Pretty much any ADB, ADB command you run will go ahead and start the server if it's not running. The kill server just allows us to force it down and get a fresh one in case we think something's not working right. Now, ADB can also be used to send commands and information out to the devices and virtual devices. And it provides a really rich set of capabilities. You can do things like copy files to or from the device from your desktop. You can install applications onto the device. You can kill processes. It's got a lot of things you can do there. And I'll give you the URL to the full list of commands for the ADB utility. The thing is that most of those things you can do from the ADB command line, you can also do graphically another way. And that's, how we'll, that's where we'll spend our time. Um, there are a few things, though, that ADB does that are not really available to us graphically. One of the key things is the ability to open up a Linux shell within the device. So if we run the ADB command and we give it the shell command argument, it will actually open up a Linux shell into the device. So if I go out here and I just say ADB shell, 
what will happen is I'll get back a prompt that looks like a Linux prompt. And in fact, it is a Linux prompt. And I can now start typing Linux commands, and they'll run within the shell on the device. So if I do something like the cd tilde command, right, that's a Linux command that says, take me to my home directory. And don't worry, if you don't know Linux, that's all right. I'm just kind of showing you this is there. We don't spend a lot of time inside the Linux shell. So now that I've gone to my home directory, I might do something like uh, the ps command just says, show me the list of running processes. And it'll show me all the processes that are running on the device. Then if I type the exit command, that exits the shell. And so everything after I typed ADB shell through when I typed exit was running in a Linux shell on the device. I was in a Unix command line environment. Now sometimes you'll want to have an individual command and you just want to run that command on the device and get the results back. Well, if you say ADB shell followed by some arguments, those are passed to the shell on the device and run directly. Right? So if I say something like ADB shell PS, it goes out to the device, runs the PS command, which is the list of running processes, shows me those results, and immediately puts me back into my Windows command line. So the only thing in that case that was Linux was those results that were coming back. So we have that ability to be interactively in the shell or just run a command and get the results back. Now something to be aware of when working with ADB is that as long as you've only got a device connected up or you only have an emulator connected up, you can just run all your ADB commands just fine. The problem is, is that if you have multiple connections, so you maybe have an emulator and a device connected up, or you've got multiple emulators opened up, as soon as there's one more, po one that more than one possible ADB target, you have to identify that target. Now, the most common scenario is that you've got a device connected up to your desktop, and you have an emulator rate or virtual device connected up. So for that common scenario, there are short shortcuts we can use. If, I want, if both, of these, both are connected up, the device and the AVD, if I want to run a command, I just include the dash D option, and that says, send this command to the device. If I run the same command but with the dash E on it, that sends it out to the virtual device, to the emulator. Notice, too, that the dash D or the dash E comes right after the ADB command before I say any other commands. Now, things can get a little more complicated if you have multiple connections of the same type. So you have, say, multiple AVDs open, multiple emulators open. Right? A dash E is not going to be good enough because they're both emulators. So in that case, we have to work with the serial numbers. Right? So what we can do is that if we go out and remember that each emulator is identified by that number in the top left-hand corner. So if I look at my two emulators I have here, one's 5554. The other one's going to be 5556. Right? And of course, if I run my ADB devices command, it's going to show me my list of connected emulators. And of course, the serial numbers for those are going to match up to the serial numbers that are those numbers that appear on our emulators, right? the 5554 and the 5556. So if I want to send a command to 5554, what I do is I just do the ADB-S saying I want to use a serial number, provide that serial number, and then the actual command. If it was a physical device, I would use whatever serial number showed up for that physical device. But the key is here, it allows us to have multiple targets out there and identify to ADB which target we want to send the command to.